Welcome to Troll Lord Games Twitch channel. I am Daniel from Haunted Holler Painting, and today I am working on our young dragon. Just want to say hello to everybody. We're going to talk a little bit of color theory tonight. Um, we're going to be working on this dragon that is going to go up for auction at Troll Lords, uh, Troll Lord Games .com, um, along with with a few books and it's gonna to go towards the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, now you may notice I look here and I look here cause down here is Twitch, I mean, sorry, TikTok and up here is Twitch. So um, we're streaming to both right now. Um, let's see here. Now I'll try to answer questions as they pop up and we can have uh, some pretty good discussions tonight and have fun. So uh, let me cut down the, my background music that's going to Twitch a little bit. We turn that up here in case Dale joins us. Oh, I'm right here, bro. Oh, there he is. Let's turn the music down. So let's turn it off. Okay. All right. We'll turn the music off. So, Dale, today I've actually got TikTok. I don't know if you use TikTok. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it, but no, I don't use it. So I'm streaming live to TikTok right now. Um, so hopefully we'll have... Why I is that why I can't find you anywhere here in the Twitch list today? Uh, no, or am I? Or is the North? I mean, the, oh, here we are. Uh, all right, there we are. Hold on. Uh, yeah, there you are. Okay, good. Sorry, I had the wrong channel pick. So tonight we are going to work on the dragon, but at our first break, we're going to talk a little bit about color theory. Um, now, I am going to discuss what I did to the dragon, because you remember how far we were in the dragon last week, right? Yeah. Okay. I stripped all the paint off the dragon. I just wasn't happy with it. One, I wasn't happy with the huge hole in its chest where the stand went, and um, I saw somebody else do this to the dragon, and I thought it was really awesome. So, what I, uh, I'll show it to TikTok here real quick, what we're currently working on. But what I did was I filled the, the, the chest cavity with green stuff putty, shaped it to match everything. You can not even tell that there was a cavity there, can you? It was right there where my finger is. So it might take a minute to update on that end. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Anyway, so... I did see the static shot that you showed me. But... I ran a wire up into the base of it. That way, I modded the base to where you can't tell there was a stand. And uh, I think it looks a lot cooler now that um, we it did does. that. We did that to him. So what I've done is I went ahead and I put down purple um, in the main scale area because you know we we have to have a little bit of darkness in in the recesses of the scales. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take a color called Dragon Red. Right there it is. And we're going to work on dry brushing that into the model some. So that's what we... So have you given up on a red dragon? No, it's going to be red. Color? Oh, this is a color color scheme. I've got it. Uh, um, I've got it completely mapped out right there. So I mean, that's how much work we got to do to it. So. And I'll post it to the wonderful Tiki Talk. You can see it, it pops up into the, the thread. So um, I've got my big makeup brush since we're going to be hitting a large amount of area on here. And I want to try to get through most of this tonight. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to knock it out. So, uh, and um, let's see here. And tonight we're going to talk about mixing colors a little bit. So... I think we're going to have a little fun tonight when we can talk about color theory. So let's see if we can go ahead and get this on here. So this might take a couple of coats of this dry brushing with this to get the red to pop. So I don't know how well you can see it out. It'll be interesting to see how this turns out, man. Yeah, hopefully it'll turn out pretty good. So I talked to Chuck today. How's Mr. Chuck? He's doing all right. Like busier than a one-legged man in a face-punching contest. <laughs> uh, we we have a like mutual it. friend that we usually meet at um, Christmas at the like the weekend after Christmas that comes in, 
His dad lives about 300 miles from us, and we meet in the middle, and we go to eat at, like, Cracker Barrel, and we exchange gifts and stuff like right. that. It's uh, it's my buddy Kevin. He's got the he's the guy that's got, he owns DiceCollector.com. He has the world's largest dice collection, and, uh, oh. it's, yeah, it's so, like, he comes in, and we, you know, we eat and exchange gifts and just catch up, and, you know, my family's usually there, and we, we're discussing that because it's... The Saturday after Christmas, mm-hmm. so and whether or not we're going to be able to make it because of the COVID restrictions, and yeah. we're we're talking about uh, possibly him coming to my house or something like that. And yeah. well, we just got the um, the go ahead uh, today to uh, that we're allowed to gather in my province that we're allowed to gather in a family bubble yeah. with as many as ten additional people that aren't in the bubble but gatherings no bigger than that for christmas because you know being a little uh, dorky island it's really easy to slam the door closed here so yeah uh, every time things start to heat up we just close the doors and everything settles down again yeah. and we're ahead of schedule for this latest what they were calling a circuit breaker where it's like this is a temporary measure but we got to get it back under control folks yeah and we're back under control now so they're opening it up a little for christmas so that just means in my mind that you know half the island's going to be infected by new year's but it's what people want you know yeah so you can't blame them for that hey geek preacher chuck's doing pretty good um he runs uh, every other Saturday night. We get together and play Castles and Crusades at his house. So, with a couple of our friends. So, but I will tell you, my wonderful state just reached number one in something, and it's not college football. Oh, what would that be? Uh, we are the number one for most active cases of coronavirus. Oh. I, you know, they couldn't be number one in college football, so they had to be number one in something. Okay, so we're going to... It could got, be worse. I'm going to switch over to the smaller brush real quick. There's some areas I'm not able to get to that I want to get to. And this isn't like a standard. It's more like an overbrushing than what we're doing, which means we're not taking as much paint out when I wipe it out like I would normally would with a dry brush. Yeah. So DDK. Hey DDK. So again we're we're sitting here and we're painting a model. Uh, I kinda wish I had a way to put the TikTok on the get them looking at the model as well. But it's a it's a red dragon. So it's I got TikTok running on my tablet right now and it's up in a stand so so where do I find you on TikTok? Uh, I'm labeled as Big and Whistle, B-I-G-U-N-W-H-I-S-T-L. Okay. I get the Stormtrooper first uh, helmet on. So. All right. Now. Wh- hey, shut up. <laughs> and they really like to play their little videos to you. Oh, I know. Awesome. I know. As so, soon as you pop in, you get videos. Who are you following? Let's see here. The accounts. I want to follow, but I don't want to follow Celine Dion. Come on now, ain't she one of yours? <laughs> she is one of ours. And along with Nickelback, we've been trying to sell the pair as bookends we want to dispose of for ages now. Um, I, I do have a funny story. So, um, my best friend of 20 years, you know, he passed away about six years ago. And, um, you know, he, uh, I worked in healthcare IT and, um, the hospital that I had been previously in charge for as far as the health, the IT guy, uh, was where they brought him when he started to pass. And, uh, we were, we're both really big into music. And, um, uh, so I went over there and, um, to the hospital cause I'd been moved to an office building to work on other stuff. And, um, so I went in there, and uh, he was, you know, in a coma. And I looked at his dad. I said, I can get him to wake up if he's just faking. And I played Nickelback. I said, he's pr- he's either going to hit me or, or, or not wake up. And his dad thought it was funny because, you know, the, it's a big musical family. And because uh, me and him both hated Nickelback. So 
I, I don't get it. I mean, their their music is not particularly wonderfully distinct or anything. Um, but I mean, you know, they're doing what they've been taught to do, and that's follow a formula to make uh, pop music generically palatable music. Yeah. You know. I understand. I, I guess it's just care. it's not the kind of music I'd be listening to in the first place anyway. Yeah. But I just, I, and which allows me the lu the luxury of sitting back and being all pompous and going, "Oh, look at these foolish people." Yeah, they're they're not listening to Led Zeppelin or The Doors. Yeah, see, yeah, they don't have my taste, so there must be something wrong with them. Well, how do I search for you, Biggin? I don't know how to do that. It's not <laughs> obvious to me. In uh, in TikTok, yeah, down at the bottom, there's a little. Um, Little thing, it looks like a uh, search uh, magnifying glass or search icon. Click that and then go to users and just no, type it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not there though. That's what I'm saying. L uh, look up, like look that. up, doc oh, okay. Hmm, that's weird. All right, let's let this dry for just a second because we're gonna have to put some more. Let me hit these other areas. So I'm, tr I feel like I'm wiping a lot of it off as we're moving it around. So I'm trying to get it to blast those colors out and just be raw, you know what I'm saying? So, uh... Yeah, but the, the more I watch it, the more I get the impression is that as a technique doesn't work so much by adding more paint. It's like you, well, you have to add multiple layers yeah. to the effect that you really want, right? Yeah, and that's what we're working on tonight. So we're going to get that yeah. down. So let's... Let me empty my brush. Okay. So... Oh, excuse me, guys. So we're going to talk a little bit about paint. This is our first break. So while this dries... So growing up, I want everybody to think about this. In school, you were told what were the primary colors. Oh, this is not a rhetorical question. No, nah, I, I want to know what are the primary what are the primary colors growing up? Um. Well, I, I, I. You see, I can't answer that because I've, I've been educated in uh, television broadcasting and okay. RGB, but I know that, that those weren't the primary colors. Okay, that now, that, now, right. now there is, that is a primary, so let me explain this to you. RGB, or red, green, blue, is what's called an additive um, primary color, okay? And it's the additive primary, and the additive secondary is cyan, magenta, and yellow, okay? Okay. Um, so, and what it means by additive is that means it's coming from a light source, and in order to get white, you have to add all those together, and you get white, okay? So, that's an additive, okay? Now, a subtractive. Now, when we're dealing with paint, and we're dealing with inks and things like that, so a subtractive primary color, okay, um, is going to be... Um, Let's see here. Let's look at the TikTok. It's going to be your primary subtractive colors are cyan, yellow, and magenta. Okay. So and so a lot of times kids are taught like you know yellow, blue, and red are your primary colors. And say you want to get purple, and you mix red and blue together to get purple, and it turns brown. That's not purple. Okay. Um, and why is that though? Do you, do, you, do you know why why that is? No. Okay. Well, with with um, so I'm putting down a little bit of magenta real quick, and I'm putting down two drops of it because we're gonna mix it up some. Um, so like when um, you mix paints together again, we have to go to the primary uh, you know the the subtractive primary colors, and um, so if you're mixing a secondary color which is red. Because uh, red is a secondary um, subjective color, which means red can t actually contains uh, yellow in it. And if you mix yellow and um, uh, blue together, you get green. And if you mix red and green together, you get brown. So, so, um, so what you'll see is like you can't make magenta like like. What I mean by make magenta is like you can't mix any two colors together to get magenta. Okay. So if you take a little bit of magenta here, okay, clean my brush out real quick, and mix it with, you know, over here with a little bit of yellow, you'll start to get red. And the dark, more magenta that you add, the redder it gets. 
the more yellow you add, the oranger it gets. Okay, so when you mix blue and red together in paint, you get either a really muddy looking, a really muddy looking uh, or purple or a brown. So, and of course, when you mix cyan, which is sky blue, essentially, um, you mix that together with you know, with uh, yellow, you get a really vibrant green, okay? So now we're getting into what you know as the primary colors of RGB because when you mix uh, cyan, which technically isn't a blue blue per se, you mix it with a little bit of magenta and you start to get actual, like, true blue, okay? You mix some more magenta in it, that's when you actually start to get your purple, okay? Uh, so now we have our blue, we have our green, okay, and we have our red, okay. Now if we mix the red and the green together, of course, we'll start to get a brown uh, color. But that's, you know, and if we mix the, 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 bl the blue and the green together, of course, you'll start going into your aqua colors as well. And, you know, of course, at the, the blue here with a little bit of the red here, you'll start to get a brown as well. So, I don't know if you see those colors very well on the camera. So, but that, that's, um, you know, that's the reason why when you buy printer ink, your printer ink is um, uh, going to be in cyan, magenta, and yellow instead of just um, the other ones. Now, your eyes, our eyes are, they're additive. We have three cones that see colors. And one see, sees red, one sees blue, and one sees green. But it's, the spectrum, the way it goes is, and I'll draw the spectrum out here a little bit, is you see the red first, uh, then you see the green next, and then you see the blue, okay? Um, that's how the spectrum works, and it's, it's linear, it's not circular, okay? So, and as you mix the red, you know, smear the red and the greens together, I can't do it, I don't get a lot here, it's where you start picking up from orange to yellow, and then so forth into the green. Um, and then for the green and the blue, you know, you start getting those together and that's when you start getting your other colors as well. But here's the thing, where's purple at, okay? Purple is a color that our eyes are not meant to see. It's, um, and what it does is it's supposed to actually be between red and blue, but there's no way to go to red and blue directly, you have to go through green. So your eyes, your brain actually fills in the blank of what that should be. Yeah. So it's it's a trick. So And, and actually, if you think about it, magenta um, is a purple, you know. It's, it's one of your purples yeah. right there. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really weird. It's just, now, of course, again, if we're working with light, it, it does you know, the exact, you know, it's it's the, the secondary colors that we talked about are those. But now, if you mix red, green, and blue together, what color do you get? Black. No. I, I meant like the, I meant the additive colors, the, the light. Red, green, and blue together, you get white light. But if you, because okay. add, add, you're adding them together and, and white is all the colors well black is the absence of color so um so the way paint works is that you're it's not that actual color it's the it the pigment in the paints and inks absorb the uh that light so that's why it's subtractive it absorbs it and so that's why we can see that light so the red pigment actually absorbs the the red waves out of the white light so, and if you mix all the colors together, because all of them are doing that, the cyan and the magenta and the, and the yellow, that's when you do get your black. Now, if I mix all these together, I'm going to get a really nasty looking brown color, okay? A really yeah. dark brown color. And the reason being is that there are, um, 
they are th pretty much three different types of black, okay? You've got your brown blacks we've talked about, your blue blacks, and then you also have your neutral blacks, okay? So, um, your, let's see here, your, um, let's see here, I'm trying to remember the exact ones, okay? So, your first black I'm going to talk about is jet black, okay? It looks like the stone. Um, it is, or, you know, the, and, and so this is jet black right here, okay? Jet black is a very neutral black, okay? It has a tint of blue in it, but it's not really blue. And what I mean by a blue black is it has such an intensity of blue and a concentration of blue, it appears to be black. And same way with a brown black. Now, a good blue black that you get is actually called lamp black. Okay. Um, and from the way that I believe that this pigment was originally collected, was it was actually collected as the ash from lamps. And they made the pigment out of that. So... Um, yeah. and then that's, that's how we get lamp black. Then the, um, other black, which is a brown black is called, um, ivory black. Okay. I, now ivory black used to be, they would take the pieces of ivory that they could not use. Okay. And they would, um, crush it up and burn it to the point where it was black. So, if you burn bone, it turns brown first, and then it goes black. Well, that's, you know, again, it's a brown black. So they would grind it up and put it into a pigment. Now, if you mix, say, blue with um, a brown black, you're just going to get a really ugly, dirty-looking blue. It's going to be darker, but it's going to be dirty-looking, okay? If you mix... Um, a uh, blue uh, black with like another color, you're going to get a little bit of that blue color. That's why you always go with the neutral blacks. Um, oxide black or iron oxide black is a good uh, neutral color as well. And a lot of grays are actually, you'll see something like advertised as like a neutral gray. And so like that means that that gray can actually be mixed in with the color to lower it down. Now, um, I actually do have um, the cyan, magenta, and... Um, uh, yellow in a paint form real quick instead of an ink because these were inks um, I love these I love shooting them to the airbrush they're great and so but what I want to show you is the difference between ink and paint is that um, paint has to like especially these cheaper cheaper paints like these apple barrel paints now these are great for painting models I'm not going to hit on saying that these are horrible for painting models but the thing is, though, they don't put a lot of pigment in these compared to a model paint or a professional acrylic paint. Um, so, like, if if you look at model paints like that are yellow, the um, yellow has to take a couple of coats. You remember last week when we had to put, like, so many coats of that stinking orange on the, uh, the, the chest plate of the dragon when we were trying to put that on there? It's because it's transparent or, or translucent. But what they do with craft paint is they actually mix white in as a base color. Um, and so the uh, the white, when it's mixed in like that, um, it allows them to use a less amount of pigment um, to, to get what the desired effect. So what we would do uh, is we could still mix these together and get colors out of them. But the, the thing is, though, that they are going to be like the pastel versions of those colors. Like right here is the cyan and magenta. We're getting a pastel -y blue right before it turns purple. Lift that up some. Um, You've got um, some fans in the viewers tonight. DDK says, Daniel, this is fascinating. I never knew any of this. <laughs> um, and thank you, Which DDK. Is good because... Yeah. Because I've I've digested this theory, like I said, I worked in uh, in TV, and uh, and the theory has come and gone out of my head so many darn times, you know. Now, we got a got us a pastel green here, okay, and then if you mix the the yellow and the magenta together, it it really skips the red, and you're going straight to orange here. I mean, you can get a little red if you add a little bit more magenta, but. Again, um, it's going to the orange because of the the amount of white that they put in the paint. So yeah, we're still um, 
the Twitch video is uh, still yeah. looking at mixing that pink and blue. Now you're doing the yellow with the blue and going for a greenish tone. Yeah. So that's how much delay there is in the video. Just like well, yeah, that's that's just between me and you. The audio should be caught up for everybody else. So, um, yeah. so but yeah, so like you know, you you get those as well, and you know it's possible. I mean, that's not a fire truck red, but you know that's more of a pink um, because of the white that's in there. Now, if I mix all these together here um, real quick, I get a brown. Um, again, because of the uh, amount of of white in there, it's a light brown compared to if I mix, mixed all the inks together. So it's, right. and it's more of a pastel color because of that white that's in there. So, but that's, that's you know, and again, I, I tell people that painting with with craft paints is great you can do it the key is you're going to have to have a lot of colors in craft paint because it's going to be hard for you to mix a yellow and a red to get the perfect orange when you get this pastel looking thing because the red's not going to have as much white in it as the yellow is because the yellow they're going to put white in the yellow so it will pop so um Let's see here. Uh, can you put your Twitch link in our bio? Uh, I can't right now, Derek. Um, I do have my Patreon in my Twitch uh, or TikTok bio along with the page for my Haunted Holler painting. And I'll link the Patreon real quick here. Um, now, this is just to keep me in supplies. This is not to make any money. I'm not trying to live off this. Um, I have, I've got a uh, three tiers, a five or a four dollar tier, or no, a three dollar tier, a five dollar tier, and a uh, thirty dollar tier. The um, three dollar tier gets you access to my Discord channel, and you'll be able to chat with me and Dale while we paint, uh, or while I paint, and have discussions and ask questions. Um, you would do have to follow some rules if you try to disrupt me while I do the show. I will have to uh, knock you out of the chat while we wait. We do it. Nobody has done that yet, though. Uh, Five dollar uh, tier means that you get access to any recipes and hacks that I have early uh, compared to the you know here. Like you will be able to get on there and and see. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Lindsay, life is good. Sorry, I got people posting on, on TikTok. But the $5 tier gets you access to the recipes and to the Discord. $30 tier gets you an hour of my time a month, either for me to help you with your miniature painting or for um, me to actually paint one of your miniatures. If you want to send your miniature to me, I'll paint it you know, and send it back to you. So let's put this aside and go back to said dragon and try to put us another layer of red on here um, just so we can... Try to knock this out real quick and switch it up and go to the next color, which is that orange we had last week. So let's get the, the dry brush out here. So this is what we're working on tonight. Again, TikTok, um, we're working on a red dragon here. We're trying to make the red pop out a little bit more. Now the red it will pop out more once we get the um, the orange in. So it's, it's just going to be one of those things where we're going to have to get couple layers and different things going to here so let's see here do you have any questions about all the stuff i just overloaded you with dale um no i'm <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm like just so overloaded that i i can't form a question at this point i mean it makes it's one of those things where it makes sense as you're talking about it or yeah as I'm watching you do it um, I don't know how much I would retain. Obviously, I'm not retaining enough to even ask you a simple question. How horrifying is that? <laughs> That's right, but man. No, I'm, 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 uh, no, no, and I understand most of it. Um, but, you know, again, it's one of those things that um, if I were playing with color on a regular basis, it, I could wrap it off at the top, off the top of my yeah. head. But I don't use any of that theory anymore. I haven't in in decades, literally. Yeah. So it's it's not lost. It's just. A faded memory. Oh yeah, I understand. Uh, my day job. Uh, if I don't do something for a while, I have to go back and look at what I originally did. So. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. 
Uh, Sydney, yes, I could do a dark green dragon, but we're working on a red dragon. So this dragon here is actually going to, when I finish it, is going to be auctioned off along with uh, the Castles and Crusades Player's Handbook and the Monsters and Treasures. And the money for it is going to go to Wounded Warrior Project. So, um, but yeah, the, uh, and for you all on TikTok that don't know what uh, Castles and Crusades is, um, is that is um, a RPG that is loosely based off the original version of Dungeons and Dragons, and it's produced by a company called Troll Lord Games, and that too I uh, stream I am painting on tonight. Um, let's see what DD says. I have never thought about thinning the paint out. I've just been a gloop gloop spread paint. Okay, so yeah, DD. Um, so there's different ways to thin paint out. Um, you can thin paint out a little bit with water starting out like acrylic paints um and that's fine um you know if you're just putting a little bit of water in there but if you mix too much water in see water what people don't understand is a, is a paint solvent it actually uh dissolves acrylic paint what you want to do is find the right type of medium to use like these are matte paints so what i would do is use what's called a matte medium um like right here it is. This is Liquitex Matte Medium. So I would take a 50% uh, one to one ratio of this and distilled water. And I actually have a bottle that I keep on my shelf already pre mixed when I do need to thin a paint down. Um, is that I will take that and mix this with the, the paint. Um, I'll mix this with the well, mix it with the water first, and then that mixture gets added to the paint to thin it out. And it'll thin the paint out, but it'll keep the body of the paint. Oh, and now we have crickets. Uh, oh, no. Crickets. <laughs> I don't want crickets. Well, it's just because there's just you and me here in chat, that's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so the liquid text just showed up on the screen. Yeah, oh, I know. What a horrible life. Oh, uh, we got a few people on tonight. Now, yep, if y'all are finding any of this interesting, go ahead and share it out with your friends and stuff like that. You know, again, I'm not here to make money for myself. Uh, this is something I do pretty much every night anyway because I do enjoy painting models. Uh, but also, this is to help out, you know, Troll Lord games. I do enjoy the, uh, the RPG system. It's very uh, nostalgic of old school RPGs um, as far as the material goes. Um, the rule set is a little bit modern. Um, you know, you can you can take things from fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons and easily convert them over to Castles and Crusades, and it's a little bit of an easier system to teach to younger children, is which I do as well um, with Scouts. And my daughter is coming in here. What's up, kid? Okay. All right. She's probably trying to get onto my TikTok feed because all her friends are actually, or a couple of her friends are watching the TikTok feed. So, so let's put some of this red on the dragon's face. You're so popular. It's like you're a star. Oh my gosh. Gosh. You can't be saying things like that. Oh, it's so swell. It's so awesome. Let's see here. Alyssa McFadden is putting her paintings of cities on mugs now. Oh, that's awesome. Alyssa's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, we're supposed to work together um, at Gary Con, and we were going to work at this next one coming up, but with it being all virtual. So, she also does uh, model painting as well. And yeah. um, so, this is where we're at here to talk. We're, we're trying to get the red to pop out a little bit more. Um, and then we're... Um, she, like me, I say I'm like inter like beginner, intermediate. She is like what I would call advanced because she's used to working with oils and stuff like that. And she takes her time at models compared to me. Um, but we were going to work together. Again, I was going to teach the, 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 the course. And then she was going to teach like a, a more advanced course. And we were looking at getting people. Uh, we we're going to do a contest, a painting contest, and we we're trying to find people to sponsor it and give us prizes and stuff for that. Yeah. So, and we we're going to do it in different tiers as far as like, you know, having the, the, um, 
you know, beginners do their thing. Because usually um, I'm sponsored for paint uh, with um, Army Painter. Uh, and they usually send some stuff for me to give away to the beginner courses, beginner guys, and things like that. No, Alyssa's a champ. I uh, uh, first crossed paths with her. Um, she and Jack were working on the tabletop game Torn Armor. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of that. Uh, anyway, and uh, that was the first Kickstarter I ever backed. Oh, wow. Uh, let's and see. I, I got the box game. Never got any of the minis that I wanted, but yeah. that's okay. But I got the box game, and it's, yeah. a, it's a good game. That's but good. Uh, yeah, that def that almost broke her. It was a very sad thing to watch, and you know, she, she and Jack got screwed over on that Kickstarter by uh, by both their sculptors and their miniature producers. Oh, that's not good. Uh, yeah, they they had to they had to switch sculptors and uh, and printers um, halfway through the project, and it sucked all the life and money out of it. Um, and she couldn't meet any of the deadlines. And uh, but like I say, you know, they got the basic box of the game up. But there were a ton of add-ons and a ton of minis to go with it that yeah. got produced. Apparently, the molds are still out there. Someone still owns them. I was talking with her about this the other day. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't like to bring it up too much because <laughs> it really—you can see the pain creep back into her face. You know, it was a real hard thing for her to go through. Yeah, I say it is because she is. She is a genuine person, and she's a genuine talent on top oh, yeah. of it too. So, yeah, she was great to talk with and stuff like that. We've been talking; we hadn't talked in a while since you know all the stuff got canceled and things like that. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually mixing up a little bit of this medium because I want to thin this orange down some. Uh, Lindsay, if you want to learn how to paint, uh, yeah, I can teach you. Uh, it would be at you know the whim of COVID and uh, there is a convention here locally uh, in Kingsport called um, Conopalooza and I'll be teaching it there. It's usually in October. It was canceled this year. So um, I'm pretty sure if you came over and was like, teach me to paint, my daughter would probably get mad. So <laughs> it's one of her friends. Gosh, you just want to come over and play D and D and like learn to paint models. What are you a dork? She said today, she's like, if Chuck ran a game for me and my friends, I would play it. But if you were anywhere around it, Dad, I would not play it. But it's like, thanks, kid. You're awesome. Isn't it good that the apple often falls way far, way far away from the tree? Yeah. So Chuck's like her uncle Chuck. So like you, you notice the uh, this is like really popping. As far as these scales go, like you'll see it here in a minute. The orange is like standing out, but it's translucent, so it's gonna when it dries down, it's gonna be a little darker. But um, but also once we do this, we actually go back over it again with a little bit of the yeah the yeah, well, and that's the part that I'm looking to see how that works. Out. Yeah, so we're what we're doing right now is highlighting the bottom of the scales, so. It's what we're doing at the moment, and this is all. This will cause like the when we hit it again with that dragon red, it will cause it to pop out again, and it'll be a like a really nice highlight. Uh, if it doesn't leak everywhere, gosh, some of it's just leaking. Cracking my back tonight. Get a little bit more of that. I gotta thicken it back up. I thinned it out too much. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. So that's that's gonna that brightness of it's gonna tone down when you wash over it. Okay. Well when I I'm when I dry brush seeing, over again. Yeah, I'm already seeing the variations and imagining in my mind what that purple and the dragon red is gonna like look like how it's gonna affect the subsequent layers yeah um, for a red dragon I think it's gonna add incredible amounts of depth it's already making it look quite a lot more three-dimensional than it was before yeah and I'm excited about that see I think it's gonna look a yeah, lot better than what what we were doing with the other one the other way so well I mean the other way was working but it, you know there's always room for improvement yeah 
and if yeah. you figure out a better way to do it. Okay, so that's maybe you could uh, tell us a few things about that, Daniel, how you got all that other paint off the previous model. Okay, so... Uh, back down to this natural state without wrecking the model. Right? Okay, so there's different ways to remove paint from models, and when I first started model, you know, modeling stuff like this, um, you know, we had a lot of pewter models back in the day, so you could use like stuff like acetone or paint stripper, and you can't do that now unless it's uh, safe for plastic. Now, um, Testers makes this chemical called Easy Lift Off uh, ELO, and you can get that, and that'll strip the paint off of a model really quick, um, off a plastic model as well. But the thing is, though, uh, it's expensive. Like one little small, like 12 ounce jug of it is like $15. So I use LA's Totally Awesome. So it um, it actually you can get it for a dollar for like a quart at the Dollar Tree here, a do one of our dollar stores, and um, so I just so called again. L A's totally awesome. L A's totally awesome. Yeah, like Los Angeles is totally awesome. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and title. okay, go ahead. And then uh, let me. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of red up here in the top part where I missed it with the dry brush. So. Um, you could take that and soak the model in it and hit it with a toothbrush and it'll pull it right off. So, and that's what I normally do. Actually, I take and throw it in a Ziploc bag. And in the Ziploc bag, I throw in um, the Totally Awesome inside the bag. And then I fill up, uh, throw it into my ultrasonic cleaner. And then from there, I take and... Um, fill the rest of the ultrasonic up with water and it vibrates inside the bag as well without getting that totally without diluting the totally awesome and so like um that will um uh help rip some of the paint off and then it makes it just easier when i do hit it with the toothbrush so well we'll have to get la's totally awesome on next as your, uh, <laughs> as your next sponsor now i'm shooting for capri sun that's what I drink well, when we got so, them. <laughs> so, like, uh, I, I keep it's joking. business, for sure. Well, I keep joking that I'm going to get a Capri Sun to to sponsor me before um, uh, Dr. Pepper will sponsor Steve. <laughs> yeah. Chuck says if I can pull that off. He's like, yeah, Steve will probably be a little upset with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I, I, I get the impression that people think Steve gets upset at a lot, and every time I talk to him, he's <laughs> he's the least upsettable guy ever. Yeah, he's pretty chill, dude. I've had to call, talk to him over the phone a couple times, so. Yeah. Right. Here we go again. This is the part where a lot of people get bored at watching me do this, but actually... If you get into the, the swing of things, it's actually kind of fun. So, and then, so I'm only doing this on the larger scales um, that we can hit. And then what I'll end up doing is lightly dry brushing the same color onto the smaller scales. Yeah. So it'll... But, you know, you got a lot of your attention here at the head, the neck, stuff like that, so. Yeah, well, he is pretty much in your face with that pose, isn't he? Yeah. Stopping just, lo stopping just long enough to focus in on his next meal. It's like, hmm, young. humans. Uh, yeah, or even better, sheep, because they don't fight back. Oh, yeah the sheep and... I, yeah and he's a young dragon so he hasn't got the maturity to have any sort of restraint or anything yeah uh -oh. get as lucky enough to live to be like old or very old and they start to mature to a point where they can actually stop and talk with people they're still going to eat you but uh, but they like to know, have a little conversation older. with their meal well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, everything's got to be intriguing for them or it's not worth the effort. So intrigue me, human, with your tale about your your ring and your invisibility and the dwarves who think they own this mountain. 
<laughs> I'm still gonna find you and eat you. Oh, and Alyssa is doing raffles on her channel too, isn't that? She nice? she got something going on tonight. Um. I watched her a few nights ago. Um, I'm just like slowly building up my own library of people that I watch. I'm surprised like everyone's online tonight. It must be a good night for her. Um, but she has this, um, she's got a bot or something that works for her. Oh, and yeah. uh, you do exclamation raffle and it awards you a random number of raffle entries. And at the end of every uh, stream that she does, uh, um, they turn off the ability to ask for raffle entries and they roll a random number in some way and a person is chosen and tonight they're going to win one of Alyssa's maps on a t-shirt from oh, Noble cool. Now I love... Showing. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, so I love maps. Like the map that I got right here on my desk um, right behind my monitor is the map of Aired. And um, the I, my big goal is to get a map of Greyhawk and of Orth. And my daughter, actually, Pazio still sells the reproductions of the ones that came out in the Dragon magazine. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, yeah, you said you want something to get me for my uh, Christmas? Here it is. <laughs> so she's like, okay. So hopefully she'll get that for me. I just like hanging maps. I frame them, hang them up, and it helps gives me inspiration on stuff. I get a lot of inspiration for my campaigns through maps and through um, music. So, yeah, let me just. I'm just looking around my room now. Um, so, in front of me, to the left, is the door into the room, and on the wall right there to my left, I have a map of the world. Yeah. And some Windows cheat sheets behind the monitor. To the left of that, I have a concept map of the um, city states of the Northern Land geography. So I have circles representing cities, long rectangles uh, uh, um, uh, reflecting long strips of population, squares showing, you know, blocks of forest and mountains that are inhabited by demi humans and stuff like that. Okay. Um, then there's windows, then there's a big shelf of books, and then mounted on uh, crummy corrugated cardboard, I have um, two of the hand-drawn first versions of my city-states of the northern land. Mm -hmm. And they're interesting. The first one has little white squares. It has a very beautiful color legend and, uh, you know, a distance, a scale and stuff on it. Yeah. And it's a lovely little continent, but it's got these little square white stickers that won't come off easily anymore. But they all um, have a label of one of the modules that I owned at the time. So I was making a continent and then populating it with the modules that I had available to me that I could buy at the local store. Okay. Interesting, eh? Yeah. The next version is when I abandoned that and started naming mountains and particular bits of forest, writing in trade routes and rivers and stuff like that. Um, and that's when I started abandoning modules and writing my own stuff. And then the current version, of course, is uh, I was able to do my very first digital version of it using a program called Wonderdraft. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly new program. Yeah, I think I've seen uh, that. Really easy, really easy to use. Uh, and within a couple of hours, I had the first digital map ever of the city states of the Northerlands. So I'm gonna, I want to try and find a way to get that printed. I think I could do it at the local staple store or Quick Copy or something like that. So yeah. those uh, those aren't on the wall yet, but they've I've got a hunk of real estate on the wall that I've set aside for them, and probably this summer I'll get out in the shop and make some uh, homemade wooden frames to yeah. hide some horrible paper edges, and those will go up on the wall. But yeah, I subscribed to National Geo for uh, for a lot of years, so I had a lot of maps that could go up on the wall. But I figure a world map is the one that I need, and 
you know, when happenings is happening on the news, I'm looking at my maps. Oh, yeah. I always pull it up on Google Maps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need more so of these. Now what are you doing? You're I'm trying, trying trying to dry brush. Brushing? My dry brush is a little wet from the last color that we used. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're... So that. now you've you've picked up a, a lot of. Um, are these new techniques to you, or are you just trying out a different set of? Uh, trying out is, different schemes, and stuff like that. This is much different than the first approach, isn't it? Yeah, I, I've got different techniques that I use. Like, there's one technique that I want to try called um, get better at. Let me rephrase it because I'm really suck at it. It's called um, overbrushing. It's kind of like dry brushing, but you've got a wet brush compared to a dry brush. Okay. So, now you see the orange is starting to pick up a little bit on the red. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, and the red is actually starting to pop more. Now, we're going to dull it back down a little bit with uh, with uh, more red here shortly. But we're going to get that orange on and it's just, it brightens up the the current amount of so, so you're still planning to use the same color for his chest and belly no chest and belly are going to be a brown you're going to oh, you're going to okay. like this it's going to look pretty wicked when i get done with it and the okay. back though okay now the back let me look at my game plan here the spine is actually going to look pretty cool too when we get it done um let's see here i'm gonna have a brown and then i'm gonna start blending it up with yellow into a little dirty white so Let's see here. Get more of this right here. And by the way, um, I approve of the change in stand by about 3,000%. It looks a lot better, don't it? Um, Oh, the other stand was awful clunky, and, and you were right. That hole in the chest was an, oh, man, what a horrible way to mount a dragon. Yeah, He's I know. He's puffing his chest out at us, so let's put a hole in it and mount the stand there. Thank you. Yeah, you need to talk to whiz kids about that. Well, you know, not everyone can be perfect like me and you, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's put a bit of this orange on his face here. I'm really liking how that's popping. Now look at that. It'll update for you in a second. I've got some places where purple are still showing through, which is fine. But it looks kind of weird a little bit. Well, that'll that'll also get changed and, and ameliorated when you put um, when you start putting red on it. I'm sure. Yeah. But so, in my mind, the net effect here is is going to be. Um, uh, a denser, darker color where there's bone and muscle under the flesh, and then a thinner, um, not as dense with with the dark colors um, for things where the membranes of the wings and and you know crevices where the skin bunches up and blood gets pushed to the surface and things like that. James, uh, sorry, let me answer this question real quick. James, I'm uh, painting a red dragon from WizKids Games. Uh, yeah, uh, learning to paint. Um, if you go over to twitch.tv and look up Troll Lord Games, you can actually watch me paint the dragon there. Uh, and it is something that you could teach, uh, teach your son how to do. Um, it's, it's really fun. It's a great pastime for... Uh, you know, uh, dads and kids and moms and just to sit down and do together at the, the dinner table. Sorry about that. I was answering a question there. No, that's fine. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. I want to paint one of those huge dragons. But I'd have to airbrush the entire thing on it. <laughs> Okay. 
And, you know, the, the interesting thing, I mean, I think that's one of the things that um, fascinates dragons and humans about gold um, is that it, with some colors anyway, for sure, it tends to take on a slight hint of their color. So remember last week we were talking about uh, why he might have a gold-colored belly if he'd been lying on gold yeah. all the time. Um, that still works here. I think what we're going to we're going to see is that he's going to have that beautiful tinge of gold reflecting through the red and it's still going to be as though he's been lying on a bed of gold all day. Yeah. Um Let's see here. Sorry, I was looking at this color real quick. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna it, it you're gonna see that more of a natural color because I'm I am gonna do speckles on this chest and it's gonna look really neat when I get done with it. So let's see here. Um, sorry, the like you're gonna I want to be putting fake texture in with these speckles and they are going to alternate between some speckles of the purple. And the reds, and I am going to put a little bit of gold speckles in there as well. Like, you know, it gets embedded into his skin. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it, you're going to see little things like that. And that's going to come more towards the end. Um, let's see here. Let's, uh, what I'm going to do real quick now is I'm going to switch back over and to the red dry brush. And I'm going to... Do some red over all that orange just to tone down certain areas of it. Like right here on his neck. See, this is the kind of... Oh. What was that? Oh, sorry. The internet's uh, playing hiccups and piratey robots uh, oh. with our voices right now. Arr. Um Yeah. Not great. Now it's just a rob robot going. Ar 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 ar. It's lovely. I love that when the internet works. Um, this is this is the artistry that I'm looking for. Is is um, is watching you visualize the different layers that you're applying, and then watching you actually do it, right? Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you for calling it artistry. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, there's no doubt about it, man. I'll tell you something funny. My daughter told um, her mom a while back. So, like, I play, like, guitar, and I can draw fairly decent. And, uh, you know, my daughter was taking, she, she was learning the trumpet, and she was picking up guitar and stuff like that. She's in marching band at school. Right. She looked at her mom and her little brother, who he just likes to play video games. <laughs> he 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 doesn't care about drawing. He'll read and he'll color and stuff like that. But um, he's tried to pick up painting models and stuff with me and things. But he's not really too much interested in it. He's more right. of a reader and stuff. But anyway, he she looked at her mom. Drake, how does it feel, mom, to be an artistic? <laughs> Uh, I thought her mom was going to knock her into the next room. <laughs> so. but, uh, I think it's incredibly funny myself. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a bad man. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, out of the mouths of babes. Eh? Okay, so we've toned it back down some. We do have... Oh, look, show Show the two different sides so we can see the difference. Okay, we got this one side here where it's toned down a little bit better. I like it more on this side anyway. But anyway, uh, this side's still a little... But this side is also catching sunlight coming down because of the way its head's turned. So this side is going to be a little bit brighter than this side. So it's just the way he's angled. Um, this right here is going to have a little bit more orange than this right here. Because this is sticking out towards the sun. And you're going to see that more as I dry brush a little bit. Because I'm going to put some orange back on it now. To, to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Because we're, we're, we're doing levels here. Of how we're going to make it pop. So. And the orange does bring out the red that we're looking for in the dragon. Okay. So. But we're. We're going to puts more on one side versus the other side now okay 
Now we're going to do one full pass of orange all over. And then we're going to concentrate on the sides that are going to catch more of the sun. So like right here. It's going to catch more of the sunlight. Tops of these wings. There he is right If here. I look at him too long, he starts to look more and more like a copper dragon to me. Well, it's because of the colors we're using. But we're not done. Or should I say, you're not done. I'm done. Hey, I'm done you're, you're here to talk to me and keep me from going insane. That's how I look at it. Oh, really? Wow, you picked <laughs> exactly the wrong guy. <laughs> what happened to Scott? Run off to? Uh, he's got a like where we switched to this night. Um, he's got a standing game. All right. So. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, but it's well, I fine. I don't like doing this at all. This is fun. He 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 catches me on the flip side, I think. So. And of course, I send him pictures and stuff. Okay, so here we are, Mr. Dragon. So we're going to we'll come back in here. Tops of these wings here and we're going to come in with the orange again just to make this part pop okay okay now, there's that now what we're going to do is we're going to take the one coat yellow okay we're going to put a little bit here we're going to try not to mix it but i need to Start working on his spine a little bit. So, and right now we're just highlighting the spine here with a dry brush. all like I don't like you tonight Daniel I don't know what it is oh you have back issues too do you yeah I've been in a couple car accidents and my back's crooked so and, no. I, and I sit all day long so it doesn't help at all yeah no, so, I understand that I had so, a herniated disc when I was 25 and had to have surgery to have it corrected and of course you know it's never been the same since check that spine out now just waiting for the video to catch yeah. up here. Here we are, guys, so far. Oh, look at you putting the yellow on that. Yeah, what that do you think about that? Yellow. That looks pretty cool, don't it? <laughs> it looks pretty radical. It's making the paint job look like... It's like... Suddenly we're all going, <laughs> does this guy really know what he's doing? <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... Uh, uh, ribbons back. <laughs> it's all right. That's my uh, last knowledge. All right. I'm going to so, take a two-minute break. That's fine. Um, and shake yeah. the wrinkles out of my pants and put on a cup of tea, and I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, so the next color that we're going to be using is called Werewolf Fur. We're going to switch tiles here a little bit because we're going with browns. 
Uh, hey, Teagues, it's Coolio. So it's a little watery. Uh, what's my favorite mini to paint? Uh, okay. Um, I do a lot of Warhammer 40,000 um, stuff. I really like going in and painting a lot of 40k models such as like Space Marines and, and Eldar and things like that. Um, I do enjoy going back and doing fantasy after that because I get to express myself a little bit more versus the actual having to paint an army a certain way. Um, I, I like single pieces. Like somebody will send me something like, can you paint this? And I'm usually like, sure. So... Um, so, yeah, usually, usually 40k models, I like Space Marines and Eldar, or Adari, or whatever they're called now, so, so now what we're going to be doing is, I have to hold the model gently, I, I apply no pressure to the model, so I'm going in and I'm starting to fill out the chest area on the model. We're doing one side of it here. And then we'll flip it over and do the other side of the chest. And so this isn't dry brushing. This is mainly just blocking stuff in. So we're, some would call it a base coat. It's that first layer of color. The color that I've chosen for this is called werewolf fur. It's from Army Painter. I do enjoy painting stuff like Blood Bowl models as well. Usually if I get commissions for that in, people are like, can you paint them to look like this team? So I get a lot of that type of work and stuff, so. Okay, and we'll flip it over and hold it like this. And the reason why I'm doing this is it's so I don't touch the the wet paint that I just put down. And I know you're not gonna be able to see it because of the base, but we'll try to get it knocked out really quick. Hey, William Ward, how are you today?
you missing me horribly? Nah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm dismayed that you had to think even that long about your answer. Just trying to get the first coat onto the chest. I have to say, Daniel, I'm not convinced by the brown. Oh, wait. We're nowhere near done. I know. That's why I kept my mouth shut up until this point. Now, uh -huh. so I keep my shut. My yeah, shut yeah, up. yeah. Keep your mouth shut. La, la, la. Not listening. Bye. We ran him off, folks. What we're doing right now, TikTok, is we're painting a red dragon. of it there okay let's let that dry for just a second next color uh, ochre no wait yeah pale yellow moon dust Next color that we're adding is called Moon Dust. All right, tea is brewing. I am back. Did I miss anything other than the horrible color brown? Miss brown? Oh, okay. Gosh, horrible. I never liked Miss Brown anyway. Come on, give me my point back. Got too much pain. Well, if anything, this dragon looks exactly not like a red dragon. That's oh, all I can say at this point. But I understand it's not finished, so. Just saying. I can find my red dragon. He's gonna come over there and bite your head off and eat all your pot glad. potatoes. <laughs> yeah, come on. Eat all my potatoes. Well, yeah. You'd be one fat, jolly fellow at the end of that, let me tell you. <laughs> do you go through as many potatoes as we do a week? <sighs> well, the nice thing is when you're in a um, province where the primary agricultural product is potatoes, you get a lot of variety, so there's actually some interesting choices. That's good. You've got white potatoes of six different types. Um, red potatoes, yellow potatoes, um, blue potatoes, if you can imagine. Yeah, I've seen those. I haven't had one before. I mean, they taste just like a potato, right? That's the thing. Yeah. They taste like a potato. But it's weird putting a blue, and when you cook them, they tend to look more purpley. It's weird putting a purple potato in your mouth and just tasting a potato. It's a, sort of a non sequitur that my brain has trouble with anyway. Oh. <laughs> See how it's the color is changing, by the way? Mm. That's because your painting them is always wearing a clown suit. Oh, hush. You know I do enjoy McDonald's. <laughs> I think we're going to change his name to Ronald. Okay. <laughs> See how quickly he doesn't go at auction then. 
Oh, oh hush. <laughs> I'm going off the fact that, that uh, a lot of people are just going to be like uh, bidding for the fact that it's helping wounded warriors. Well, and, you know, who did I mention to the other day? I said, I like this dragon so much, I'm going to have to bid everyone to get it into, you know, to start my collection. Now you're like, no. Nope. I probably won't be able to afford that. <laughs> we'll see. So the reason why I'm doing it like this is it pulling down and being splotchy is I'm adding texture to an area that doesn't really have a lot of texture. And what that does is gives the sense that there is texture in the model compared to what it really has. know I'm writing this all down so I can read it back to you when when the final job is done and it looks like a brown dragon, right? Oh, hush. <laughs> I'm just rattling your chain. I know you are. You know, I'm trying to, trying to keep you sane. So I'm mixing the monster brown a little bit right now. At the uh, the color that we got it's a pale yellow but it's actually called moon dust so hitting Pretty some, name hitting some wet spots here we go Ah, come on now. Mix these colors up. I told you it wasn't going to stay brown. Just overpaint it. There we go. This is the part that gets me. How so? This is because I'm trying to get up in there. And it's just reaching up in there. Hey, TikTok, we're painting a dragon tonight. I'm not trying to be TikTok famous. As my daughter would say. I just like... Gaze bailing on the channels, wishing you a good night. Huh? Hey, all right, you have a good night too, DD. Figure out how to stream that to there. Might work. Uh, Hear a door opening. Sounds like my wife is going into the other room. Right. Maybe she got tired of listening to the voice of an artistic. <laughs> you mean autistic? Whatever you say, uh, your daughter says. I swear I'm on the spectrum. I swear we all are. Well, we all are technically, but like I've got a lot of personality traits that can only I can only subscribe to saying I'm right here on this thing. So I I've often thought I should um, go through the checklist with my doctor, and I'm sure I'd score quite a number of checkoffs, but. Eh, at this age, it's like less of a worry. I'm not really seeking treatment. I'm not really having a problem with it. So. 
But yeah, I think of um, some of the ways I thought and reacted to stuff as a kid, and the way adults reacted to me on occasion. Yeah, it had there. There were pointers there. Yeah, like me, it's like it's hard for me to empathize with people. Um, also, like there's a trait that whenever you're so I'm having to use dry brushing to get to this smaller area here, so I'm gonna have to do a couple coats of that on here. But um, there's a trait that when they get into the mindset to do something, like they'll do it and do it and do it until it's done. Like if you're building something, like you yeah. won't take a break and wait till the next day. And there's been many of the times that I haven't stopped until like three o'clock in the morning when something's done with yeah, something else. Yeah, so... I used to always do my best work between 7 in the evening and 3 in the morning. Yep. That's why I keep joking with my wife that I need to not start my work day until like 4. She's like, well, what are you going to do all day? When they need you at the plant? Burn off energy so I can settle down at like 4 and get on with the job. Yeah. That's what I always attributed it to. You know, because I'd be up at like, you know, 8 in the morning or whatever, like yeah. everyone else. Burn hot and bright all day with whatever you're doing. And 7 o'clock would roll around. And finally, I was pooped enough that I, it calmed me down enough to like focus on something for longer than 50 seconds. Yeah. And then I'd look up and, well, look, it's 3 in the morning and I've got in a good night's work. Yep. When I first went into college, like, um, I was usually up till about four in the morning doing homework, and I'd get up at seven and go to class. Yeah, I know a lot of people who did that. <laughs> well, being in programming, uh, it's part of it. I couldn't do it. So what I did was instead my brain was more attuned to paying attention in class, reading the books and assignments, uh, but basically never studying for an exam or a test or anything. Yep. Um, just being able to do it off the top of my head. So in a lot of ways, you know, in terms of the careers that I've had, the places I've worked and the work I've done, I have varying thin layers of um, imposter syndrome. Yes. Because I know that I haven't worked hard for the knowledge that I can exercise with great fluidity. Uh, I have so, like, imposter I didn't syndrome. Need to go to school for computers um, to learn about them. I had to go to school for computers to get the piece of paper to say, "Now you're qualified to work with computers." Yep. Because I already knew how to work with computers before I went to school, right? So that was me. So because I spent all my time working with computers. You know? Yeah, exactly. You know, it was a major hobby for me. Let's see here. So, we're now going to get, mix a shade up. So, we're going to need... Actually, I don't really want to mix a shade. I want to use what's called a brown liner. This is a color from Reaper. It's blue. Gray. Brown. Okay. And this is like one of my favorite types of paints to use. But we're going to mix it down a little bit too. What kind of color is it? It's brown. Okay. Oh, look, yeah, so you are painting a brown dragon. I oh, knew it. This is a shade. No, it's a dragon. A shade is like a dead person who's hanging around. Sorry, I gotta mix this up. Ah. He's going insane. I'm not preventing anything. <laughs> there we go. Nice brown color. I'm gonna mix it with just a drop. Let's see here. Give me a drop. Just a drop. Just a drop. Boop. Just a drop. Okay. A little bit of water on top of that. Big hairy arm sticking in there. Yep. 
Okay. So we're going to flip this upside down. We're going to come in here. Pull it down. Get what we can in the recess. We're going to pull it down. Ah, oh, crap. Messed that up. fingers for there he is oh, I see where you're putting that in there now yeah, yeah the video just caught up oh, okay 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 it's to tone down uh, that craziness that I got going on here with all this bright color you'll do that along his spine as well uh yeah but with a different color okay his spine is gonna be uh, um, the it's gonna be a brown not brown, but uh, that purple and yellow and orange. <laughs> what? I was going to say, listen, you're painting brown. You just said you weren't going to paint brown. Now you're saying you're painting brown. I'm going to come over there. Yeah, I'd like He's to see you come over there. a brown here. dragon. It's not a red dragon, I tell you. Oh, man. I flipped the whole spot over here. Okay, let's see here. Bring this in here. Oop. My phone just went bling a bling. Uh oh. No, I have an idea who it is. My buddy, the military miniature painter. Oh, he's probably like, what's that guy doing on there? <laughs> yeah, he's probably just tuned in and gone, holy smokes, I didn't look like it. Does Dale know about this? Oh, yeah, Dale knows about it. And he's putting the full court press on the painter to explain himself. <laughs> and he's doing a good job so far because he's done this before and he's a professional educator. So there you go. And an artist to boot. Did I mention oh, he's an artist? Yes. Yes, he is an artist. I'm not an artist. No, you're an artist, okay? That's all there is to it. It's it's not for you or me. Certainly not for you to say whether you're a good artist or not. That's for other people. And frankly, it's none of your concern, right? Uh, uh, same as it's, you know, treat it the same as it's not my concern or what okay. you think of me. That's what you think. It's not what I think. Okay, so now we're... deal with what you think, and I'll deal with what I think. We're going to let that dry. I'm going to take my headset off for just a second. I'm going to go get his fire. No. Okay. Okay, let's fetch the phone and see what Baba Yaga has sent me. Uh. Oh my heavens. So now we're going to actually work on the fire while his chest dries because we're going to need to dry brush his chest. So let's see if my little clamps will work here. So is, <laughs> is there a little plastic flame that you've been hiding from me? Yes. Oh, you're such an awful man. See, wait. No, well, yeah. Search it all you want. I'm still waiting for the video to catch up. <laughs> you're still painting, as far as I can tell. Yeah, you're still working on his tail. Whoa. Camera getting beat up. Ah, there, you just got up. Oh my Sorry. God. It's a little behind, oh, ain't it? You're allowed. <laughs> your show man that's what they tell me <laughs> yeah yeah I don't believe them all the time but we'll go with uh, that. where is where's my poster tack I don't know where you leave your alien friends that's entirely up to you sir have you been keeping up with the alien raiders that are attacking her um, I'm sorry, teacher, I, I haven't been. No, 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 it's just like, like... I have not been studying, but I have been laughing about it on and off all week, how's that? Oh, really? Oh, well, I mean, it's like, you know, it's silly. 
It's just silly, that's all. It's like, man. Okay. I, for, for me, I, uh, my thought keeps coming back to what exactly was he trying to achieve. Okay. Uh, one thing, he's trying to sell a book. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the obvious one, but why is he trying to sell a book? Why did he write a book? What's he trying to achieve with the book, and therefore, what's he trying to achieve by making this public statement, other than selling books? Yeah. And if it's just selling books, well, then I don't give a rat's ass because he's just a common, crappy uh, capitalist, a running dog pig like so many others in the world. Yeah. But if he's got an axe to grind, or if he is truly insane and someone's letting him publish for some weird reason, or, you know, one of countless other interesting premises, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting back waiting to see if anything develops, you know? Yeah. Well, now, supposedly, something's going to happen on the 21st because yeah, of... That's when, that's when the Christmas star is coming out, isn't it? Yeah, it's when the... the it's when the... Earth lines and everything's going to be so close. All the planets, you'll be able to see them and stuff like that. So, with the naked eye. I mean, it'll just be a dot in the sky, but... Okay, so... First time since 1266 or something. So, what I've done is I've taken some ink and I have stained this yellow. So, we're going to let this dry. Now, why would you use ink and not paint in this case, Daniel? Because fire is translucent, so is ink. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to put the next color on. Oh, how many people we got watching? Probably like none. No. Oh, gosh. Okay, <laughs> who do we got watching? We've got... Chrism 1964, Commander Root, Knight of the Night Lady... Whoever that is. Lord Delius. Of course, that's Dale. Y'all can hear here. Um, let's see here. Martin Martin Algar. Uh, Miss Linty. Rhino Dino, 1973. Sad Girl. Saddest Kitty. Thicker. And Vic Danger. I like that. Vic Danger, yeah. Vic Danger. Vic, Vic. I think Vic was on uh, Tricks of the Trade tonight when we were talking about Paladins. And it came up with some interesting uh, comments about uh, how paladins should act and and various takes on paladins. Some yeah. modern takes, which were kind of interesting. Well, that's good. I'm glad for him. Oh, the box, he's there too. Isn't that nice? Who? He just doesn't show up on the list because he's special. Oh, Baboonski. Oh, I don't see him. Oh, is he chatting? I really? Yeah. Don't forget me. Oh, always you're watching. always watching. So, um, actually, I'm going to drop off a TikTok real quick. And the reason being is because you all suck. Just kidding. Um, I want to talk about an app. While this drives. So, um, how do I end my go live here? Let's see. I have no idea. Yeah, end live video. I thought about everything. Okay, so I don't have to worry anyway. about TikTok. I had 96 viewers. I got 25 diamonds. I don't know what that means. Um, and one gifter. What the is... Oh, that was... Uh, Derek gave me some diamonds. That's cool. Who's this James Easley guy? It seems like I know that name. No? Anyway, I'll send him some information. All right. So, um, I don't have the full version on my tablet because I have it on my phone. And I have an iPhone and my tablet's a, uh, a droid. But this is an app. And it's this one right here. It's called Miniature Painters Pro. Okay. okay. Uh, Alright. So what you essentially do is... We'll hit not now. Okay. So you select what brand of paint you want to use. I've got Citadel, Vallejo, Army Painter, P3, Reaper, War Colors... Apple Barrel, Folk Art, um, and then that's the custom colors. I'll just turn that off. But I really want Coat the Arms, so if anybody knows that Coat the Arms, I'm looking for a sponsorship. Anyway, so the cool thing about this is you come up here, boom, 
All right. Actually, I do have the full version on this one. Yes. All right. So I come over to paint settings and I have all my paints companies listed. So if you look um, right here under Vallejo, um, I have 19 colors listed under model color. So, and I actually have these colors and I can't find that one. Save the life of me. It's somewhere. But I actually have all these colors from Vallejo. Well, sorry, the ones that are checked. Let me rephrase that with these little blue marks. And if you come over to Citadel, if you look at, you know, the colors here, the ones that are checked are colors that I have. Go to Army Painter under War Paints. Same thing. You know, everything, it's got the little blue check mark. I have. All right. So. So let's say I wanted to match a color. I want to match this cyan bottle here. So I could go, all right, well, let's uh, take a picture of, actually, let's look at my Masonic D20. Let's say I want to match this blue. So I uh, take a picture, okay. So I've got a picture of this D20, okay. And then I tap on the color blue I want to match. And then down here at the bottom, I get different types of blue. We've got that that matches it from war colors. Uh, we've got another one. This matches from folk art, which is a craft paint. You know, um, ultramarine, you know, blue ink from P3. So um, I can tap anywhere into the picture and get the color that I tapped on. So I now know what color I can look for. Okay, so let's say we're going to get this color blue that is on my blue palette. Picture. So we see that, let's pick uh, Folk Art Ultramarine. Okay, so we're going to go to that. We come over here. Actually, let's go back paint settings we go back to paint settings so we know it's the ultramarine I'll say that that's something we need to look at though so we go find the colors now and I will show you something here folk art if you think has 143 colors listed you can get these paints for 50 cent a piece you can have this full range of colors from folk art for 50 cent a pop that's going to be like what Good value 70 bucks you have this many colors it's 143 colors this would be almost 500 dollars in model paint now you have to deal with what i told you with earlier the paint's a little bit thicker you have to thin it down with a medium and you also have to um uh worry about the whites that's in it but i mean if you have this many colors and you it's not like you're only getting 17 milliliters you're getting 59 look at that that's yeah. how big of these are compared to let's see here this right here i mean look at the difference in that i mean i if you're starting out these are not going to hurt you these are actually okay people say people users that use these get frustrated because they're not as opaque but you gotta start somewhere guys and it's not that yeah. bad anyway so, and I so mean, the whole concept of of thinning paints like i mean that's an ancient concept right right even oil even oil painters my grandmother was an oil painter she did a lot of really nice landscapes i thought um but, I mean, you know, she would talk about that, too, while she was still painting, that, you know, sometimes you have to treat the paints as though they're like a, a concentration that is required to be thinned to actually yeah. become properly applicable paint. All right. So that's a standard sort of art thing that you have to deal with, no matter what you're painting with or on. So here's the cool feature that I use because I'm colorblind. I select oh. I got, I, the color. I'm going to use purple um, iris for this. There's three little dots over here. I click on that, and then I go to compare color. This is the main feature that I use. If I don't have that color and I need it, I now start looking for it through other brands. Now I can look Vallejo. That same color is called Imperial Purple. 
Citadel, the closest color they got, is called Key Moss Purple. So, and if you look up here at the top part, that's the actual color. So I can push these up into there and try to find which one matches it best out of the other colors. And, you know, I can go through and finally find the color that I think matches it best. And it may be Malvarian Purple from Reaper. So, and that's cool. But now, another thing that you might want to, let's go back to Purple Iris. Now, let's look at complement colors. Let's say I'm painting a model in, like, uh, say I'm painting a Space Marine, right? And I decided I want my Space Marine to be purple. That's fine. The whole idea behind Space Marine colors is bright and bold colors because Space Marines show no fear. They're doing what they're doing for the Emperor, and they're going to get out in the middle of it. So that's fine. So we'll choose that purple color. But we want a color that complements it. So we click on here. So now, then at the bottom, we have a color that complements it. We can use antique gold. Uh, we can use toffee. This, these browns complement that, that color. Now, that's just a complementary color, okay? So let's say we want a triad, okay? A triad is where we go from light to dark. Say this purple iris is going to be our medium color. Okay, um, actually, no, this is a color triad. There's different triads, so I, I think that's an analogous, but okay. So we now have these two other colors go with that, so we can use these other colors with that purple iris. Um, here's our, our other colors, okay. So we've got purple iris, we've got um, these colors down here, which are like the azure blue, Stuff like this. So let's say we would use the purple iris as our base color, right? This azure blue, we can use it as a highlight to that purple iris. Or we can come over here and we want to highlight it in a different purple. So we got like princess purple or, you know, this is folk art colors and things like that. Um, you know, monochromatic. Like the princess purple. <laughs> so monochromatic means that you know we we just get that one color that we were talking about earlier the uh you know the uh lavenders and violets and stuff like that so they these will go together as well and then you have the tetradic which adds a fourth color into the mix so you just got to know what this is a little bit more color theory that i'll get into further down the road but this app is like a godsend for me that's what happens. You're colorblind. I'm red, green, colorblind. Uh, so it's hard for me to tell certain reds and greens apart. It's hard for me to tell um, pinks and grays. So, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. That's part of it. Uh, some blues and purples give me fits uh, as well, you know, together. And it's just, you know, that's just part of it. I, I sometimes think that the world sees colors better than me and it gets me mad. Like, people get to see things a lot brighter and more awesomer than I get to see it. And, like, but I know it's not true. But, anyway, but, you know, it, it's just the frustration of being a colorblind person. So, but, oh, well. So, we're going to come back yeah, in here. I have, a, I have another buddy who is uh, colorblind. Okay. Um, he doesn't talk about it much, so I can't tell you, you know, where his particular colorblindness lies. But, red, green, <laughs> I do have glasses for it. I have a set of those. Is that something that you can aid with glasses now? Uh, in chroma glasses, it's a filter that actually just adds a layer of purple, which isn't real, uh, <laughs> over over okay. everything, and it causes the colors to pop out more. And it's got to do with That's... the fact that it's going over, you know, the the red. It helps the reds pop out a little bit more in the greens, yeah. and it really helps with lights. Lights are really something that's, like, kind of intense for it to do as well. Yeah. So, we've got the, the chest done. So, we're going to do the wings. Um, now, we're going to do the undersides of the wings first, okay? And the color that you're going to hate that we're going to go back to is going to be that werewolf fur that we had earlier. Um, but we're actually going to probably brighten it up just a little bit where to go werewolf fur werewolf fur where did you go it doesn't want to be used there it is so we're going to 
probably mix it in here a little bit with this toasted marshmallow. I'm going to use my big fat brush to paint this. Who are you calling a big fat brush? This brush right here. Oh, the big fat one. Yeah. Okay. So, the undersides of the wings, the way they're set up, it doesn't have a lot. Of, it doesn't show a lot, you know. Um, but we want to still give them a little bit of attention. So what we're going to come in here is we're going to come. This is the base coat. So we're going to come in and edge all this and clean up the mess that we made. Right here. Look at that. He's painting the brown dragon with another color of brown. Oh my gosh. What are we going to do with you? <laughs> hey, you started it. Do you, you can I tell you a secret about brown. the color brown? Can I tell you a secret about the color brown? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so brown is a new word. It's only about 400 years old. Okay. So do you oh, know what brown used to be considered part of? Like if they said, oh look, there is a brown cow, you know what they used to say? No. Hey, there's a red cow. Oh, they still do that. Yeah, but brown is part of the red family. Just I'm hearing you, and I understand that. <laughs> but still. You just want to no give one me ever a hard time. Was, no one was ever frightened by a brown dragon, right? Well, so, it, you know. It doesn't breathe fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It doesn't matter what color it is. You're right yeah, there. It's going to run for the Republican ticket in the United States. Yeah, that'll be the day. This is not Shadow Run, my friend. <laughs> it could be. It could be, though, yeah. I mean, you know, we've had the... Uh, we've had the um, reality show host uh, running the most powerful nation in the world, so... Why Why wouldn't there be elves and orcs and trolls and dragons running things? Totally on board with it. I just want to know when I'm going to get my tusks. Yeah. I'm just a fat elf. <laughs> okay, folks. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do the underside of this in this brown. Okay. Quote of the night, I'm just a fat elf. Oh, yo, I used to have a picture of an elf ranger that was overweight. And I would use it for my D&D &D character online when I had to play a, a elf ranger. It was That's so funny. funny. No, we're not getting any reaction out of chat. This is a very non-reactive group. I know. Well, it was People better just, earlier. Just come around and watch. I mean, it's fine. You're allowed to. This will probably be the just last color we put on because it's already 947. Yeah, true enough. Yeah. Very close to the end of, of it, right? Chicken. You've got... Obsessed. You're done in 15 minutes or so, right? Yeah. Yeah. A, as I said, there's a piece of fried chicken upstairs with my name on it. Oh, Chuck, honey, we know you're listening all the time. Don't you worry. Yeah, but you're not talking, Chuck. Yeah. Say something, Chuck. You big baboon. You know, you. he has access to this Discord. He just never... He got on one time and realized I was broadcasting him at the same time, and he jumped right off. There's a big fraidy cat. I know. Of what? We still haven't figured out yet. What's to be afraid of? Let's see here. Okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. That's <laughs> uh, pretty funny stuff, that. No, I'm, I'm sure that old Chuck, uh, after a long day of having to listen to whiny role players all day, um, appreciates being a little anonymous. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let those wings dry. Right. So the next color that we're gonna put on the wings, 
um, is a dry brush of this ochre. Okay. Right. So an ochre. Yellow ochre or red ochre? This is an orange ochre. So it's a bit of an orange. And then from there, we're going to take an elven flesh. And then we're going to highlight it with that. So it's all going to be that. So on the top side of the wings, though, we're looking at... Let's see here. Burnt red. Now, when you said you were going to take elven flesh, would that be from a skinny elf or a fat elf? Fat elf. Because they have extra flesh to give out. So we're going to let all this right. dry some. Um, next color that we're going to use on the fire... It's this wonderful red. Not magenta. Okay. We're going to use red because we want it to turn that orange. That doesn't look red to me at all. That looks like mustardy yellow color. What? No. You're, that that was the ochre. You're, oh. <laughs> you're, you're, you're that far behind. Yeah, that's how far you just flashed that just now. It's gone now. Okay. Now it's like trying to load again. So we're working yeah, my on... bandwidth is like, you know, the bandwidth of a gnat's, uh, you know, yeah. hair. It's that <laughs> big of a tube. So now we're putting on some yellow or some some red here. Okay, we're... that red looks really nice. You're just showing me that now. Yeah, but we've seen that before, right? That's the same red that you used the first time around. Uh, no, this is an ink. Okay. I'm confused. I'll just be quiet now. That's fine. It's okay to be confused. <laughs> so what we're doing now is we're building up the fire. Okay. I hear one of my children. We're building up the fire. Isn't Wasn't that a Donna Summer uh, disco hit in the 80s? Maybe. So what we are doing now, let's see here, we're going to put a little bit of orange here. Okay. When, when this dries, we're going to put more red down this area here. And then we're going to, it's going to look like fire shooting out of his mouth. Anyway. That's what he does. Yep, that's it. That's pretty much it. I think that's it for the night. I'm just going to call it. We yeah. got nine minutes, people. Let's see. What's what's in the news, Chuck? What, what, what do we need to watch out from Troll Lords? It's Christmas time. Everybody's trying to get everything ordered and, and can't get in time. Go put Steven in with the whip to get him in there and the mortars out. We Did you see want... the pictures that uh, Steve posted of the post office uh, package uh, areas? No, no, I did not see that. I've been trying to stay off Facebook. Let's look. Um, yeah, no, the picture is like a uh, you know post office uh, uh, holding areas that have mountains of packages that are bottlenecking on their way through the system. Well, see, that's the thing, though. Everybody's that's what everyone's doing. Well, they're shopping online because of the COVID issues, and then they're also um, um, UPS is prioritizing um, COVID vaccines over over everything else, which is good. You know, I think they need to. Um, I can't yeah. wait till my day that I get to go take the COVID vaccine. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, but I hadn't seen that picture that Stephen posted. I saw somebody's picture of. Um, Let's see here. Um, posted of Castle Zygag, um, one of my white whales that I can't get because <clears throat> they don't make it anymore. Thanks, Gail. That's where I'm going to leave that up. Mm, I'm not seeing the picture. Um, I, I think it was on Discord. Uh, I had to actually, in uh, Troll Lord Steve's channel. It's like it was. It's not an especially wonderful picture. It's just a picture of like uh, package after like big piles of packages just sitting in a room, and yeah. it's just like you know, like I think I heard a figure today for Canada anyway that postal packet service uh, this year is up by forty percent over last year. Yeah. So you know, yeah. apply that to your country where the population is quite a bit bigger. Yeah. And you get an idea of what kind of backups the UPS is. Uh, is well, um, so here's the thing: suffering. a lot of people don't realize. Or USPS. 
If it's cheaper for UPS to sh- or USPS to ship it via FedEx or UPS, they will actually ship it via FedEx and UPS. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. They, they anything over. They look at it this way: anything over um, a pound is automatically mm-hmm. going to get shipped via UPS or FedEx. It's just which is ever is that cheaper. That's interesting. Cheaper that meant. A lot of people don't realize that. So. No, I didn't realize that. I wonder if it works that way here, too. I'll have to look into that. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hopefully in the next week or so anyway, we can get this yeah. dragon done and we'll get it uh, boxed up and shipped off to, to our man, Stephen Chenault. And then he'll hold an auction on the Castles and Crusades group for the dragon and a copy of the player's handbook and monsters and treasure. Um, I don't know if it's the new player's handbook or not. I'm trying to get my picture into that handbook. Um, under cleric. Um, I want to get mine and, uh, the geek preacher under there back to back. We're standing, holding, holding, holy, uh, um, uh, emblems in one hand. And we have maces in the other hand, holding off the undead. I'm trying our best. I even told him, I said, I will, if I can come up with the money, I will pay the commission of the piece. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. The fat elf has spoken. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I will see you next week on this channel, tomorrow on Norse Foundry. Who knows? I might paint this dragon some more tomorrow. We'll figure it out. Thanks, guys. One last thing. De- yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Grumps what was the name me. of that uh, program that you used? Oh, uh, Miniature Painter Pro, Miniature Painting Pro. So okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, supposedly, did you see what Chuck says? Um, oh yeah, I am not yeah. painting next week because it's Christmas. Woo-hoo. So well, I'm going to take and, uh, take Merry Christmas to yeah, all of our uh, screw viewers. you guys. I'm taking a week off. Ha! <laughs> Oh, wait. Nice. I'll be off New Year's as well. <laughs> I'm taking two weeks will. off. Two weeks. It's allowed. It's so, allowed. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. It'll be the last time you see me for two weeks until I get the COVIDs. Bye. <laughs>